Um, just briefly, the rollout strategy, we started in 2008 with research and planning in Miami-Dade County, largely put together an advisory committee and developed our first RFP. Um, in 2009, earlier this year, we began in Miami-Dade County because that's our home base, awarded a grant. This first part is very important to the region. We awarded a grant to the American Red Cross because the key priority that came up was direct emergency financial assistance. Um, we, there was a grant that was made, for example, to a soldier who'd come back injured, had a roof that had been leaking while he was gone. <laughs> and so the family was basically living in a house where the roof was leaking, insurance was slow, no other resources to pay for it. Through this fund, they were able to pay the roofer to get the roof fixed. Um, but what we did was work with the American Red Cross, the grant is to the one in Greater Miami, but this fund was established as a central resource to serve all five counties eventually. The idea that in each county they are developing what they call trusted agents. These are individuals providing services already for military folks who have relationships, may be working with them on an ongoing basis, and financial assistance emerges as a need. Rather than us trying to find 20 organizations to give a piece of the money to, we've created a centralized resource and trusted agents will be able to access that on behalf of their clients to address that need. And so I think this afternoon there's actually a training for some of the folks who are gonna be part of that in Palm Beach County. But so you know there is a resource that exists now for, um, for this program. Um, we've collaborated on some statewide grants in Miami-Dade County. We've awarded a grant to the Concept House to really work with the vet center there to expand sort of what a centralized resource is. Um, and looking at proposals we've gotten for, for, I think, Broward, some of that stuff naturally happens, collaboration, in a way it doesn't in Miami. Um, but this was an effort to uh, try to create a broader centralized resource. We can't fund government, so we basically engineered a partnership between a nonprofit and a federal entity <laughs> to be able to expand what the Vet Center does. Um, and there are other eight other grants that we've awarded in Miami-Dade County, which brings me to Palm Beach County. This meeting comes a bit after the fact, but we um, had an RFP out. The applications came in on June 8th um, to award grants in Palm Beach County. Many people here who probably didn't know about it, again, part of my being here is to get business cards, so when we do this again, which we will, there will be more people who know about this opportunity. And while we don't have a specific date yet, um, we're gonna start doing a second round of funding in the fall of 2009. Not clear whether we're going to do Dade and Palm Beach and all these counties at one time, but by the latest there would be another RFP in early, um, early next year, probably about six months, yeah, early 2010, that we would be actually awarding grants again up in this area for additional programs. Um, the priorities that we're looking at, these are the kinds of things that came up as the kinds of things that folks need. And again, these may be by organizations who, you don't specialize in serving military clients, but you may have services that relate to these that with sort of training, education, and the right relationships, you may be an organization who can actually be of help to folks who are in our community. Um, home care issue where a family member is deployed, counseling and support groups, re-entry and reintegration support, um, retreats that people need to do just sort of to readjust to being back. Um, we are working on improving access to information about um, the services that exist. Come on. Whoops. Um, financial counseling and education. When, when one family member leaves who may have been either the breadwinner of the house and they now are, you know, active duty, there may be lots of income issues. There may be, you know, the, the spouse who was left behind who hadn't necessarily been managing the money before and is now in the position where I have to manage the finances of this household. So programs that help with financial education, financial counseling to help people manage money um, who aren't, who have a slightly less predictable, you know, income flow than a lot of us are used to. Supports and services for dependent children. Broward, I know, has a pretty amazing setup for helping identify 
children of service members who were deployed and to help that family in particular while the service member is gone. Um, civilian employment, one of the grants we just made was to Miami-Dade College to create within the college a more supportive environment for veterans who are coming back and now getting their education, but may have issues related to trauma, brain injury, or just the fact that I was over fighting a war, that I need help in fitting back into an educational setting and other needs that folks may come up with that we haven't thought of, and obviously services for um, service members who are injured. And finally, I'm not gonna go through both of these Texas slides, but the one thing that I will point out, um, the difficulty of outreach, not a build it and they will come situation. We received a lot of applications from organizations who said we have this great fantastic program, we have case management, we have all of that, but hadn't necessarily had an understanding of sort of the military culture. And part of that is sort of the sense of pride of I have served my country, why is it I would now go sort of asking somebody else to help me? Um, and so some of those models that we may use for different populations may not work in terms of the culture of the military. And so just having a great program doesn't mean that people are going to come to it. And so building relationships, and as we identify who the players are, particularly on the military side, who can be of help, we will do our best to share those so that if you have something that is of value to the folks who are in the military, there's a way to communicate that to those who need the help. Um, visit the, for more information about the national initiative, I'm sorry, the Texas initiative, that is the triad fund. Um, and for us, that is my name and, uh, and email address and phone number. Um, Jean Logan is in Miami, but um, she's with Strategic Partners. Alexandria Douglas is back there. And so in terms of how you can help, it may be by being a grantee. It may be by hopefully being more aware of most everybody in this room at some point raised their hand of being, knowing <laughs> someone or having a family member who has served in the military. And every one of us sort of has the opportunity to begin to become more aware of what do I have that can make this a place where we can be a service to those who have served us. So if you're interested in being connected with this, just let me know and we'll patch you into our email network. So thank you.